Hi guys and welcome to all of Mike's product review videos on this, the Works WX739. It's a 20 volt, 200 watt rotary tool, brushless as well. This thing is a beast, it's an animal. Let's go take a closer look. So here she is. Uh, Presenting this beautiful box uh, includes a 34 piece accessory kit, go anywhere creative tools. It's worth noting it's not just a brushless rotary cordless tool, it is more than that. It's by like a long, long way. Uh, and I'll show you why. Flip it around upside down and the inside out. Look at that, it's just beautiful throughout everything that you do everything you see on this pure beauty let's go through the little instruction pamphlets that come with it this one covers the maker x range and everything that it's about so there it's got go anywhere creative tools create repair create renew construct teach inspire share collaborate um, all very very positive things I'm sure board meeting for that was quite an entertaining one at that one hub limitless possibilities and power and they're true to be honest do it all with the same battery 2 amp 4 amp batteries you also got the cordless wood and metal crafter so it's for doing pyrography soldering and anything else you want to burn into it's got digital display and I really can't wait to get my hands on one of those a um, little bit pointless for me because I do have a soldering station, but I really want one just for the hell of it anyway. The cordless rotary tool, which we're going to be looking at today. I do apologise about the light flickering. It's really causing some people some issues there. Um, cordless angle grinder, which is where we're going to be looking at cut-off discs and uh, various bits and pieces. Cordless mini heat gun and a cordless airbrush. It's worth noting that this is now old literature. It's only been out a few weeks, a few months. Uh, however you want to put it, and it's already got another four editions. They are a USB light, a crafty cutter, a mini blower, and a glue gun. I think there's probably one other one which I'm missing as well. I think it's total now for nine adaptations to go on it. But uh, yeah, um, this is the instruction manual for the Maker X WX739. Lots and lots of jargon, do's and don'ts, as usual, work safe, home safe. Power tools, use, do, 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 don't. Uh, I'll go through some of the more important ones with you, but this does go very, very detailed. Special care when working on corners, sharp edges, avoid bouncing and snagging. The accessory is really, really thorough. Teach you everything you need to know about how to safely use the rotary tool. Don't burn it. Um, why? <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, it's got the collet system and uh, the way in which it goes, the lock on it as well, which we'll look at that closer in a second, and the utility key for it as well. It enables you to lock it off as well as uh, do the uh, the end piece for the rotary uh, cut-off discs. Um, component list, carving bit, chuck, collet, spindle lock button and spanner. Um, it does have a few other accessories as well. Technical specifications, 20 volt brushless, 3.2 mil collet size, rated capacity is maximum of 38 millimeters, M7 spindle thread, 5,000 RPM minimum speed, 35,000 maximum, and the weight of the machine bare tool is 130 grams. That is very, very lightweight uh, considering, but then again, it has the advantage over other rotary tools. The fact being it has no battery on board, it's on an umbilical cord system, which I'm about to show you. Uh, a weighted sound pressure, I've never got that, um, it's quite loud, it sounds like a dentist drill, if you don't like that sort of thing, wear some ear protection, uh, vibration fractures, again I've never understood those if I'm honest, and uh, there you go, there's the racing capacity output of 10 amp, um, in 10 amp out pretty much, uh, from the 20 volt source, it makes 200 watts of power, it's a lot of power, and obviously we get robbed in the UK, we don't have the USB port because they decided to take it out of our one, um, You've got the various designs of the collets that are including the accessory box, which I'm about to go through with you, and how to operate it as well. Uh, don't hold it, well, hold it like a fist, don't let it get, sit on uh, nothing whilst you turn it on. Um, 
Yep, various other, lots and lots of safety information there and a various amount of uh, accessories that you can buy. Uh, if you don't like to buy these, you can buy the, the other rotary tool brand uh, as well as small HSS bits. You can also get different collets. The stuff that the other brand does is probably a lot more readily available in the UK. Um, and it's probably where I'd go for it. I wouldn't recommend buying um, the eBay special bits because they're quite useless in my personal opinion. Um, so you've got various bits and pieces obviously for it. Um, it's the umbilical cord. The cord's a bit longer than it shows in the picture, but I'll show you that in a second. You've got a power button, the rotary knob, a USB port inside, and a belt clip according to that. Uh, I don't think we've got a belt clip on ours. Um, I certainly haven't seen one in the box. Um, there you go. Going more about safety information. We'll glaze past that because, yeah, it's... Also comes with a charger, it's the Works WA3880. Three, eight, eight, it's got three year warranty as well. It's worth noting that's a three year warranty on standard use, one year for trade use. Uh, and it's got the charge times for the various battery chargers and the such like. And the flashing light sequences, very, very nice. We took those to one side. Let's have a look instantly first at the accessory pack. It's got all the cut off parts, your polishing wheels, your sanding uh, arbors, I think it's called, the drums. Uh, you also got stuck down there, so I will use my handy little torch slash magnetic finder. It's got a magnet, I suppose. They're usually quite good at finding magnets. Um, it's got your standard uh, rotary tool key. Um, this one's in, finished in a a wrought chrome effect, very, very nice, very good looking. Uh, then you've got various accessories in here. You've got a total of 34 accessories. You've got the cutoff wheel adapter, little wire, uh, wire brush adapter, the arbor for the rotary drum, little micro grinder, and a little 3.2 mil drill bit. Um, that's actually really handy if you're making a stand, put these in, use the 3.2 mil drill bit, um, and then you can put, make a little stand out of wood got mine somewhere around <laughs> um, but yeah these are very very cool and also got little engraving pieces as well um, inside here you have a WA3551 battery that's the really cool one with a light up I'm actually going to keep this preserved for future videos whereby I might need to call on a uncharged um, as it is out of the box battery um, so for the purposes I'll be using a equivalent used WA3551 for the show and tell part, powering it up. And the same with the battery charger, I'm gonna leave that untouched, uh, just really for, uh, just in case I ever need a brand new, uh, untested seal or not, anything's different about brand new stuff versus used stuff in the future. We've got quite a few chargers. Um, I don't wanna bore you guys with that. So here's the hub, very, very beautifully hidden away underneath there is the umbilical to it. The umbilical is about a metre long. Um, it's very, very ample length. Um, it's about this really nice flex, which I think is heat proof as well as uh, abrasive proof. It's not very abrasive resistant, shall we call it. So the umbilical folds out. I'm sure after a fair amount of use and not putting it back in the box become very very good it's worth noting as well that my workshop is bitterly cold um i think according to my little machine down here it's about seven degrees in here uh in summertime this will become a lot easier a lot more flexible but seven degrees which is probably around about 42 degrees fahrenheit for any fellow american um viewers uh, i'll put translate everything as much as i can and then you have this, the rotary tool itself. Um, get focusing on that. It's got spindle lock there, as was described in the manual. Rotate it round so it locks in place. Seven mil system uh, for the shaft. Direction of rotation is also indicated at the end here. The other end here is where the, uh, the umbilical goes into. And um, yeah, it's also worth noting, it does say just there, brushless motor oh yeah because this is one of well this is about the cheapest way you can get a brushless motor uh rotary tool without going for uh 
I think Proxon is the only other brand in the world, I think, that make a uh, rotary tool that is brushless. I know that, um, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, there you go, uh, Dremel did or were going to be planning on making the uh, Dremel, I think it's something like the 8260. It's supposed to be a brushless thing that's going to be really, really mad. They announced it in, I think it was June, July time, and we still not got it. So, um, yeah, I... Well, not a lot really to say about that. Don't tease us. Don't say, wow, I've got this awesome product. But by the way, it's not going to ever see your shelves. So there you go. Um, very important, and I will stress this. That label there basically says... Make sure it's at the lowest position before you push that button. There's nothing more to it. Um, it will fire up with um, it in the maximum position and you can end up with a runaway tool if you like. So to plug it in, it's very, very simple. It's quite obvious polarity as well. You've got a nice work symbol here. You can see that. You just line it up with the end. And just push it home. And, uh, then for firing it up, push the power button nothing happens it's great it's good that nothing happens because so we can then use one hand hold the tool like a pencil i'm actually right-handed so i'm going to swap over um it's so alien if you ever tried doing that so one hand hold it like so and then the other hand can control the rpm and there we are at 5000 rpm uh, now, I know a question that a lot of people are going to come up with is, is it staged and what are the RPM increments like? They're extremely and extremely um, precise. So a small amount of movement here. And then you're up to probably around about, I rough guess, I don't know, 6,000 RPM. And then just leaning on it, you can hear the increase in motor speed and the RPM. And then I'm going to shut that off so that when you get around to about here, so you can actually hear what I'm saying. When you get around to here, uh, that is actually flat out there. You'll hear it again when I fire up in a second. There is no gain between here and here. I'm not quite sure why that is. Maybe under load, um, it runs at 35,000 RPM at load here, and maybe it ducks down to about 30,000 RPM there, possibly. Uh, I'm unsure at the moment. I haven't really used this uh, in anger yet and be able to sort of really get to know it well. But um, yeah, it's also worth noting there's a dead zone in the minimum as well between here and the kick from it as well. Oof, if you're not holding on to that, it really does kick quite a lot, like a mule. Um, so yeah, there we go. Um, I'm going to set it a little mini task. I'm just going to turn it off. What we're going to do is we're going to grab this. It's a uh, retaining ring off of something. I'm not going to say what it is. Um, it's off of a rocket motor if you really want to be technical. Um, a very big one. But that's another story for another day. So I'll lock it in place. I'm only going to do this up finger tight. There is the tool there, but because of the square that they use for this, it's also worth noting you should always put these in approximately halfway of the shaft, so I'm going to put it into about there. Then lock it up. You can go full uh, depth, but I don't think it's 100% necessary for this. So I'm just going to do it up finger tightness. There's no real mileage, really, of doing up with this. You're probably just going to end up getting it stuck, so I like to have it finger tight. That's what I do on my previous rotary tool. We're just going to see how it gets on at different various RPMs and see if or not it manages to uh, get this tarnished uh, burnt ammonium perchlorate off of uh, this retaining ring. Let's see how it goes. So turn it on first. Increase the speed. Like a hot knife through butter.
The good thing is about these tools, they're very, very self-efficient, if you like. They don't require high speed. Yes, I could do this at 35,000 RPM, and it sounds a lot better, I'm sure. But even under load, this really is more than adequate, just at minimum speed. I mean, its ability to hold RPM as well is absolutely staggering. The drop-off, considering the pressure which I'm applying, if you used a, a competitive, competing rotary tool, um, they tend to drop off really, really quickly with speed and under load, and this just doesn't. It is just... It's beautiful. And then we could start going around the edge. It's not really necessary, so we shall stop there and uh, say all the tarnish is removed. I can then put that under the polisher, and uh, yeah, it's done a very good job of removing all the uh, the immediate tarnish. All that's really left is to stick it on a proper polisher, or I could even use, I suppose, could use actually the polishing wheels. Why the hell not? Let's do it from start to finish, shall we? Why the hell not? Didn't plan on doing this. I don't really plan any of my videos, let's be honest, but <laughs> we don't want an abrasive wheel underneath there. But So what are you going to do today for your works video, Mike? No idea. I'll make it up as I go along. It's always the best results, I think. So there we go. There is a top and a bottom. You can see they're slightly conical shaped. So that denotes to me that this is the bottom. And what you do, you just... Screw it in, wait till it gets a bite on it. And then if you're really cunning, just undo that. Just be careful obviously of these, they're quite sharp and can get in your fingers, poke you a little bit. Again, we're gonna go half shaft depth. So approximately there. Lock it up. Just hold the shaft. Let's put it on a little bit more. I'm gonna grab some polishing paste. So what they're using is absolutely ancient. It's made by Peak. They are a very local company to me. They're uh, made in Saffron Walden. British. I'm the best and all that malark. So what I'm going to do is apply a small amount. And first of all, without it being on at all, I'm just going to smear it in a little bit. You only really is a small amount of this, this is way too much really. And what I'm gonna do, I am gonna just grab a bit of rag, just wipe that off. Because there's a little bit too much on there. So holding onto the device, sprays everywhere. Dear. Right. So minimum RPM again. Keep going off screen. I'm sure you guys are really thrilled to sit there and watch me polish a piece of metal. After this, we're all going to go play farming simulator. Don't worry about it. Or maybe even lawnmower simulator. Or pressure washer simulator. They're all out there and they're all real, unfortunately. This black tarnish. Oh, I keep going off camera. I'm actually concentrating on doing this. 
Um, this black tarnish that's coming off, this is actually good. So the oxide, oxidization layer across the top of the metal. It's worth noting that I do know about this already. So let's turn it up a bit, crank her up. If I try and overload this, it stops. And the reason why it does that is for safety more than anything. Um, it has a safety overload feature. So if you're trying too hard and it will not do it, rather than burn itself out, it'll actually automatically stop. You may find it a bit of a pain to having to turn it on, turn it off again, but it means that you're overworking the machine. You're trying to do something that it's not capable of doing. Um, other brands don't have that. This does. So it's a very handy feature of one which I actually, as much as it's a bit of a pain sometimes, it's one that I commend them for. So there we go. It's worked its magic. Really, I'm not putting any pressure on this at all. It's the tool doing the work. Let's give it a wipe over. There you go, with not too much effort at all. You can almost, well, you actually see my finger in it. Can you see yourself in it? All the focus is going looby loo there. I don't think, you, oh, you can see, yep. Yep, there you go, guys, that, that, that's you. In a really funky way about it. Yeah, so there you go, guys. Um, that's the Maker X. I am going to be um, collating, uh, collecting um, the various different pieces of the uh, Maker X series. And um, I suppose I better do this bit to camera. So there we have it, guys. Uh, I'll do this bit to camera for you. Uh, the Maker X. Um, honest to God, this is a real godsend. Um, I, let's be honest. Let, let's, let's put it out there. I do own one of these, the Dremel. Um, and although it's good, it isn't as good as a Maker X. There's no way about it. This weighs an absolute ton. Using it like this, look at it, compare it. it, it it's, it's like the me of rotary tools, the big fat version or the slim athletic one. Which one are you going to go for? Of course you're going to go for the Slim Athletic one. Let's not beat around the bush. Um, power output wise, this just it just doesn't quite cut it. It's also only 33,000 RPM. Uh, they do do a new version of this that's uh, 12 volt, not 10.8 like the version which I've got. But the batteries are like 60 quid each. That's a lot just for a battery for a tool that just rotates. I say just rotates. Well, it does. It just rotates, and that's it. Um, also, the good thing about, obviously, the Dremel is the amount of accessories that you get to go with it. Um, I'm not going to take that away from them. Let's have a look, see what accessories I just happen to have lying around. Talk amongst yourselves. I know you always do. You have a router table. Goes on. Table. Router comes through there. It's beautiful, and it does that. Turned into a suddenly turned into a sideways step into a Dremel video. And it does that by the collet coming off here, and then it screws into place. The other thing as well, they do really nice. Uh, 
They do a plunge router. I know everyone's always wanted a router for uh, the one works. Well, here's a Dremel one. It's quite cool because this just unscrews here. Then it's in the bottom here. You do that up there. You put your router bit in, obviously, first. You can actually turn it around so you get the, the lock and the button in the right place as well. Very nice touch. There we go. Lock it up there. And there you have it. It unlocks that side. Plunges down and you can lock it. You have various attachments to it as well. Really, really nice. Yep. Yeah, I've done that. Yep. Plug the works product. Plug to plug the works. Plug the Dremel product in a works video. Shoot me, sue me. And as a thank you, basically, for hanging around to the end, I shall show you this because you guys deserve it. You know, the, the faithful ones, the ones who probably just put this on in the background whilst they're working away hard. Or you put it on your TV and you're actually interested in what I'm saying. So as a thank you for hanging around to the end, I'll show you this. This is an exclusive as far as I know. I don't think anyone else knows about this. The works WX739 does this. Really, really important. It's actually what holds it together. This is the one from the drum. You do have to take the collet off first. But you're going to love this. You do have to line it up properly. I don't think it's exact. Which does mean this, this, can live in harmony together. Peace can be obtained. See? I'm not going to get into details of what that's like analogy wise, but I'm sure that you can make your own. Political, country wise, whatever you want. So, yeah, there you have it, guys. No matter what side of the coin you're on, you can be guaranteed that you can live in harmony with the works. WX739. Maker X. Enjoy, guys. Um, as a thank you very much for uh, sticking around. I didn't know that myself. I hoped that. Literally, I was hoping and praying that the day came um, when I got my hands on a Maker X that it did that. I didn't know. I had to find out the hard way. Um, stick my hand in my own pocket by myself. Well, actually, I think I got it as a Christmas present. It wasn't Christmas present, it was a birthday present uh, from my wonderful wife. She's very supportive of my channel and the time and my effort that I put into this uh, from my auntie as well thank you and from my grandma-in-law as well she's um, very very supportive of my channel as well she's always interested in what I'm doing there you go Iris thank you Lynn thank you and Lindsay thank you um, yeah that's all I've got time for today guys um, thank you very much for supporting my channel thank you very much for watching my video and with that bye for now